dealing with authenticity. It's building that relationship. Building about the value. Because you want to make that impact. It can make you happy. Elevate others around Welcome us. to the Selling from the Heart podcast. Your home for authentic, effective, and socially integrated sales strategies to help you master the art of selling. Join your co-hosts Larry Levine and Daryl Amy, along with some of the world's best sales thought leaders and practitioners, as we explore ways to help you grow your sales. Hello and welcome back to the Selling from the Heart podcast. Your co-host Daryl Amy here today with Larry Levine. What's going on? Oh. Another day in selling from the heart paradise, Daryl. I'm just so time. glad to be here. You know, one of the things that was so fun today, and I'm sure you can catch the recording of this, is we had a phenomenal conversation with our friends over at Sales Enablement Pro about enabling trust. And it was so cool, uh, not only the, the conversation, but the interaction and the, just the sheer number of questions that came in. Right now, trust is such a critical topic in sales, and I'm so glad at Selling from the Heart, we get to be in the epicenter of having discussions about this. So fun and so needed. And we all know what happens when there's no trust and no credibility. We know what happens to deals. Also, that's we know right. what happens to client relationships. It's such a big thing. And that's why we really want to invite you to join us in the Selling from the Heart Insiders group. And also some of you to possibly take the next step, which is to be a part of the Selling from the Heart a Trust Building Intensive and both of these are available to you at sellingfromtheheart.net. You can learn more. In fact, you can join this insiders group free for 30 days and hang out with other like-hearted sales professionals who are all aiming towards growing, uh, in particular, and growing in their ability to build and sustain trust. So come join us, the insiders group, Larry. It's always so much fun. It's, it's, you know, you know, it's even more fun is just to see this whole movement around selling from the heart, catching fire. And uh, it was just, it was so cool. I just have to share this, but uh, somebody had tagged me into a social post recently and I go, I opened the picture. I go, okay, well, what freeway is that person on? It was somebody driving into Paris, France, and they were listening to selling from the heart. And it was the coolest picture. And I go, you know what? We're building something really special here at Selling from the Heart. So I just wanted to say to everyone in the insiders group and all of our listeners, thank you. And everybody listening in from France, welcome. <laughs> We're glad you're here. By the way, if you're new to the Selling from the Heart podcast, you've joined a growing community of sales professionals that are dedicated to being genuine, being authentic, adding real value. We call it Selling from the Heart. And you know, Selling from the Heart really is, uh, we talk a lot about mindset and skill set. And which really begs the question, what are, what is the mindset? What is the skill set of high performance people? And we've got a, guest oh, great setup. Today. I told you, Larry, oh, I know, a good transition. You had, some good, you, you had some good coffee this morning. Yeah, that's right. Hey, why don't you introduce our new friend and let's dive in. Oh, hey, Ruth, how's it going? <laughs> it, <laughs> you can already tell we're, we're in for a real treat. But before, before I formally introduce Ruth, just a special shout out to my friend Francisco Martinez. We've become friends on social, though we both live in Southern California. It's, a, it's worlds apart and hours of traffic. But as I got to know Francisco, he goes, hey, Larry, he goes, I just have to ask. You have to have Ruth Gotian on the Selling from the Heart podcast. Trust me on this. I said, okay, Francisco, we reached out, had a conversation, and thus here you are. Ruth Gotian, welcome to Selling from the Heart. We are so looking forward to this. Here here yeah, I you am. are. This is so good. <laughs> and thank you to Francisco, one of my former students. This is, it's, you know, it's really all about your network and the circle you surround yourself yeah. with and that you don't lose touch with important people. And everyone's important. Well, we've got a great conversation queued up here today. But as we get started, <laughs> Dr. Gotian, you know the question that every guest on the Selling from the Heart podcast answers. And that is, what does it mean to you to sell from the heart? You know, my mentor said to me, do something important, not just interesting. And when you do things that are important, it's those conversations that where you can have an impact, where you can create this ripple effect, mm -hmm. where you can create something which will long outlast and outlive you. And if you can do that, that is selling from the heart. Oh, Daryl. You know, it, it's, it's so, it, this is interesting because I always share with people, 
I thought we've heard them all because we haven't. We've, the podcast has been going on for a while, but I haven't heard selling from the heart like you just shared. So thank you, because, you know, I always one of my favorite sayings is, you know, selling from the heart is just about giving a rip. And it kind of condenses a whole paragraph into a sentence. And I just love how you just shared that. So thank you. Beautiful. My pleasure. Beautiful. Well, hey, we're here to talk today about the success factor. And what I love, we talk so much at Selling from the Heart about mindset, <laughs> skill set. And if you're watching on video, you see it right there. Uh, Ruth's new book, The Success Factor, Developing the Mindset and Skill Set for Peak Business Performance. Oh, that's so oh I'm so excited. You like the product placement? Product yeah, placement good. is beautiful. And Great. everybody listening to the podcast <laughs> has permission to hit pause right now. Go to Amazon, <laughs> get your copy, and, and you're going to want to leave a review on this. Give us a give us the backstory on on how who you who you talk to. I mean, to say that you've got this success factor, that's a pretty bold yeah. statement. So who did you talk with and how did this come about to where you were able to boil this down into such an incredible book? So I have been studying extreme high achievers for years and years and years. And it started because I was surrounded by them, which was different for me because I always thought success was for other people, right? You had to be born into the right family, have the right opportunities and chance. And then I quickly realized that's not what it is. And it started because I was leading what's called an MD PhD program. And I realized that these students are really doing things differently. At the age of 43, while working full time and raising my family, I went back to school and got my doctorate and started studying success, really doing a deep dive. And at that point, I was studying what are called physician scientists, those that have the MD, but also do research. And I found four elements that they were all doing. They're not habits, they're mindsets. And then I quickly started interviewing other extreme high achievers to see if what I found in those physician scientists also held true for others. So I have been interviewing more Nobel Prize winners and astronauts and Olympic champions, NBA champions, NFL Hall of Famers, CEOs, senior political officials. And now here I am. Here I am talking with you guys. About <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, we got okay. We have to peel this back. I, I'm just curious, what were all the commonalities that each one of them had in common? I'm fascinated because I'm such a sports geek, so I can't wait till you get to the sports stuff. Oh, <laughs> wait, what's your favorite sport? Uh, I'm me. a diehard baseball fan. Diehard ah, baseball fan. I got one of the um, 1969 Miracle Mets. Mark ah. Shamsky. He is in. He is in the book. Um, but this is really about the four mindsets, and I say mindsets, not habits, mm -hmm. because if it's a habit for someone else. You can't just copy and paste it into your life because your life is not their life, right? You hear about all these successful people that they read for hours a day and they wake up at five o'clock in the morning and they make their bed and do all of this stuff. But if you are a night owl and you don't go to bed till two, three o'clock in the morning, you're not suddenly going to start waking up at 5 a.m. and being very productive, <laughs> just not going to work. And I think that's where we've made the mistake in the past. But what we can do is we can figure out the mindsets and then customize it to our own lives. And that's really what I tried to do. So the four things that all these extreme high achievers have in common, one, the first one, they have found their passion, their purpose, their calling, right? It's not just about passion. You find your passion, you'll never work a day in your life. No, no, you'll still work. This is your calling. <laughs> you can't not do it. This is why you were put on this earth right? This is why you wake up in the morning. This is why you can't quiet your mind at night. It's what we call in adult learning intrinsic motivation. That fire comes from within. Now, this is very different from extrinsic motivation, which is the diplomas, the awards, the promotions, the gold medals. That's extrinsic motivation. That's when other people are judging you. And I don't know about you guys, but if other people are going to judge me all day, that's really hard for me to stay motivated. But when it comes from within, there's nothing you can do to stop. So think of the Nobel Prize winning scientists that maybe someone in their family died from cancer and they're good at science and they like it and they want to dedicate their lives to finding a treatment. That's your oh. calling. Yeah. 
where do you start? I mean, this like that was wow, the first. Yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> yes. We're, we're cheering, cheering you on here because this is you know when you think about the the heart of an authentic sales professional. Let's let's just take this and apply this to selling. Selling is hard. It requires a lot of effort. It requires a lot of rejection. We know that when we sign up for it, you know, what is going to motivate you to be excellent at this? There's got to be more than, than that extrinsic motivation of the paycheck or the president's club or, you know, whatever. I, there's got to be more. How coach, coach us on how a sales professional could begin to discover that intrinsic motivation. Yeah, it's really what I take people through at the very beginning is really to take them through a passion audit to mm -hmm. figure what it is that they love doing. Because the research has shown we only need to spend 20% of our time doing what it is that we love. And that gets infused in all the other parts of our work and really makes the other stuff not deplete us so much. Because we have this gasoline we're pouring on the fire, our internal fire of what it is that we love to do. So remember, do something important, not just interesting. Remember, that's my definition. So in sales, what is that important thing that you're doing? What mm -hmm. is that impact that your work is going to have on other people? How is that going to create a ripple effect? Get down to that core. Get down to your why. And trust me, people forget their why. I had students that they would want to drop out of that competitive MD-PhD program I would tell you about. I would literally pull out their admissions essay where they said, why I want to do this as a reminder. So everyone needs to have the reminder of their why. And when you do that, you'll flourish. Oh, you, you know, as I'm listening to this, I had flashes of Kobe Bryant just like running through <laughs> my head because I would have loved to have been a fly in the wall in any one of his interviews on what his passion was and what, what fire just burned inside that guy. Because, yeah. you know, you use 20%, I would bet with him it was way more than 20% because that guy was probably the most intense person I've ever seen. Yeah. Oh, you're going to love it because there's an interview there that I have with Coach Steve Kerr. Ah, <laughs> fantastic. Well, that brings up the next point on this. <laughs> you know, you've got to have intrinsic motivation, but there's also a strong work ethic that you found that, uh, right. that all of these folks had in common. Unpack that for us. That's right. So when you figure out what it is that you love doing, you are going to outwork everybody. And I don't mean that you're going to work 18 hour days. You're actually going to work much smarter. You're going to leverage your peak performance hours. You are going to figure out when you are your sharpest. And that's when you're going to do your deep cognitive work. Right. So for example, for me, I'm a morning person. So I do my writing, which takes a lot of thinking. I do that in the morning but I will do my Zooms and responding to emails, which are more passive tasks in the afternoon because you want to leverage your peak hours and you don't want to burn the, the daylight during the peak hours. So you, you have to learn how to manage your time really, really well. But it's also the way that they look at challenges and they overcome challenges, right? So they never question if they will overcome a challenge, they know that they will. For them, it's all about the strategy. How? What is the strategy I haven't thought of yet? So have you guys seen the movie Cool Runnings? Yes. Oh, yeah. Remember right. that? Yeah. Yeah. The Jamaican yeah. Bob's the, Yeah, team. exactly. Yeah. So one of the people who I interviewed was Devin Harris. Devin Harris Fine. is an original member of the Jamaican bobsledding team. He made it three Olympics. And I, I asked him, I said, Devin, you come from a tropical island, right? <laughs> and now, now you're going to race in a bobsled. And mind you, they didn't even know the teammates until four months before the Olympics. They hadn't even been in a bobsled <laughs> on a track <laughs> until a couple of weeks before the Olympics. And they had wow. to rent the bobsled from the Canadians. <laughs> so I said to him, I said, Devin, did you ever question if you were going to get to the Olympics? He's like, oh, no, that was never a question. We knew we were going to get to the Olympics, right? It wasn't a question of if, it was a question of how. What do we need to do? So they really outworked a lot of people under the most difficult circumstances. They did it. I love it. 
And you know what? You know what I like with, and I, I'm, I'm looking again. I'm going to look through this for the sales lens for a moment. Is how many, you know, how many sales leaders and sales professionals out there will take meetings and have deep conversations with people when they know their brains aren't working the best, as opposed mm -hmm. to being really tight with their schedule, understanding, right? If you're a morning person, and I learned this a long time ago, all of my tough meetings, anything that required much thought, and I still carry it to this day. I have to do it in the morning before a no. certain hour because I know after that my brain starts turning to mush. Yeah, I'm the same way. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. I'm a big power of full engagement junkie. And um, I just finished um, Carrie Newoff's book, At Your Best, which talks about those green zones and the circadian rhythm. I think this is a really, really critical. And I'm happy to hear that was one of the key things for high performers. But there's two more. So what was the third uh, third aspect that you discovered about <laughs> becoming a high achiever. So the third one is that really strong foundation, which they are constantly reinforcing what worked for them early in their career. They're going to do again later in their career. They don't stop doing it just because they became successful. So for example, Neil Katyal has argued 45 cases before the Supreme Court of the United States. Most people don't argue one. He's argued 40. Five. So I said, Neil, what do you do to prepare for these cases? And he's like, oh, Ruth, I've been doing the same thing for every single one of the cases. I do three things. First, I prepare a binder that has every possible question that I might get asked. And I prepare the answers for it. And I take that binder with me to court and I put it on the table right in front of me. He said in 45 cases, he's never once opened that binder, but just preparing that binder prepared him for the case. That's one. Mm. The second thing that he's done is that he creates moot courts. Moot courts are simulated court environments. He's done that for every single one of the 45 cases he's ever done. He used to do 15 of them in the early days. Now he doesn't do 15, but he still does them. He does five. The point is he's still doing them. He doesn't say, oh, 45, I know all the Supreme Court justices. I don't need to practice anymore. No, he's still practicing. And last but not least, if you're one of Neil Katyal's children, instead of a bedtime story the night before the case, the opening arguments, you get to hear the opening arguments <laughs> of the case. That is your bedtime story. <laughs> because oh, said, Lord. <laughs> he said if he can explain it to a child. Yeah. He can explain it to the court. And the oh, point is he's done oh, all so of good. those three things, right? So good. Every yeah. single one of those things he has done over and over and over again for the 45 cases. Bonnie Blair, remember her? The long track sure. speed yeah. skater? Uh -huh. The Blair Bunch? She told me at that time, she had the her biggest competitors were, were then the East Germans. And she said their legs were like tree trunks. She said, I could work out in the gym all day. I would never have their power. So she went back to one of her original coaches and she said, I'm not going to have their power. I'm going to beat them on technique. She went right back to her basics. Kobe Bryant, you just mentioned, yeah. he was notorious for going before sunrise and doing yep. the layups and the three yep. pointers. Yep. That's the same stuff you'd see in any seventh grade gym. Mm -hmm. Same exact drills. Mm -hmm. same yeah. exact drills. So you want that strong foundation, which you're constantly reinforcing. Oh, this the parallels nice. to sales are, are so it, oh, obvious here. And I think exactly. this is, you know, the reality, let's just be honest when we get, um, it, I, that Supreme court story is so convicting <laughs> pun intended. But if you think about <laughs> the, um, you know, the journey of becoming a professional in sales or any profession, you know, there's a point where you think I got this, I can yeah. coast. Yep. You can, but you won't achieve the next level of success. You won't be a high performer. And things like prospecting, preparation, practice, uh, all of these things are essential for you, whether you're, you know, 21 or have been doing this for 21 years. And I think uh, this is great to hear and a yeah. phenomenal reminder that the best people out there have to practice the fundamentals and build that foundation. Yeah. You know, what's, what's it, it, you have to share a favorite story, but I just want to just layer on something really quick is if you listen to any professional athlete, and again, I, I got to geek out on sports on this, but if you ever listen to an after game interview, 
Mm -hmm. they will always say, you know, positive things, even if it was, even if it was a terrible game, right. They find some positivity to it, but they said, you know what? I'll hone up. I missed this, or I could have done that better. I'm going to go back to Mm -hmm. the basics The basics. and every day they go back to the basics. So I just have to ask you really quick before we get to the fourth one, Dr. Ruth is this of all the people you interviewed, sorry if I'm throwing this in here and we, but you know what? So be it is of all the people that you interviewed, who was the best person that you interviewed and why, what made them that number one person you interviewed? I'm just curious. I I only interview good people. Oh, I know. (laughs) No, it's interesting because, um, you know, people say, how do you pick the people? I didn't just pick famous people. There are people who actually had to, move the needle in how we do things, process things. But I'll tell you the most interesting one that surprised me. And that was Apollo Anton Ono. The most decorated winter Olympian, short track speed skater. Remember he used to go with a bandana Uh on Uh his head. Also got the Mirabal trophy on Dancing with the Stars. Um, I felt like I was talking to a colleague. Hmm. We were talking about the books that I read right? The leadership books, the positive psychology books, he reads too. And when I was talking about a concept or a theory, he went toe to toe. He knew what he was talking about, that I wasn't expecting that. And it was so great that I was able to do that because he said, it's not just what you do on the ice. It's what you do off the ice. That's important. And he had to know everything that he could to optimize his performance his nutrition, his sleep, his hydration, the psychology, he studied it all. He just grabbed everything that he could because he Mm. said, if it just makes me a fraction better than my competitor, I can win. Wow. That it, I love it. And that sets up the fourth point, which is this whole concept of (laughs) informal (laughs) learning. I'm the master of the segue today. Uh, This is, this is so critical as well that when you say uh, I see learning and I go, yes, when you say informal learning, differentiate that from us in terms of what you learn from these high performers. Yeah. So remember I told you, I went back to school at the age of 43 to get my doctorate. That's unusual. Most people, for adults, it's really hard to sit in a classroom. We just don't have the time. We don't have the bandwidth. We don't have the resources. We really don't want to go back to school at that age. (laughs) But it's really about what you can learn informally. So if you think about Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Mark Cuban, billionaires, right? They're Mm -hmm. notorious for reading three to eight hours a day. But it's not reading that made them billionaires, It's being open to new knowledge of saying, what do I not know? What is the gap in my understanding? What's being used in one industry and can I get it to work in a different industry? Because that's innovation. So it's not the reading, right? That's a habit, but the mindset is being open to new knowledge. So what are some of the other ways we can be open to new knowledge so that maybe we can grab things from other industries and reimagine how we can use them in our own. So certainly you can read, right? You can read books like The Success Factor. <laughs> you can, like that? Uh, the, yeah, that was know, good. Articles. That was very good. <laughs> um, you can read You can read articles. You mm-hmm. can read, um, you can um, take courses on LinkedIn Learning. You Mm -hmm. can watch webinars, listen to podcasts, right? Hopefully people are learning some great stuff here. And you can actually also learn by talking to people Mm -hmm. and surrounding yourself with a team of mentors, which is what all of the high achievers do. So it's really about opening your mind. It's not any one thing. It's opening your mind to new knowledge. And if you can start doing that, coupled with the three other things, you are going to see your success soar. Oh, this is so good. This is a time to press pause just for a moment to all the listeners is key in on just this last couple minutes. Mm -hmm. Because imagine what you can learn if you read and paid attention and listened to the things that executives listen to. And the reason why I bring this up is quite often and looking at this again through a sales lens, quite often, not all the time, but quite often, salespeople will read sales books. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. It's part of what they need to do, but they'll stop there. How about reading and listening 
and watching for things that executives read, watch, listen to, and then think about all those conversations. Hey, what you'll learn, but all those conversations you can start. It's just, it, it, it takes me back to the conversation you had with Apollo Ono. Same thing. You were reading the same things and yeah, watch right. what happened to that conversation. Yeah. I told him, I said, it's one of my favorites because I wasn't expecting that at all. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. And I we talk a lot at Selling from the Heart about equal business stature. You know, you want to walk in as a sales professional and be able to go toe to toe. And and that story is so powerful. And you know, the mindset of curiosity and being intentional learner, having yeah. a learning plan, all of that is so critical for high performance in Absolutely. sales. Absolutely love it. What was one of the nuggets as we wrap up today? And this conversation has been <laughs> fascinating. If you're listening in, you got to get your copy of the Success Factor Developing. You got to hold mindset. it up again. Yeah, where is it? Here we Where's go. Where's the book? Oops. There you go. Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> Developing the mindset and skill set for peak business performance <laughs> learned from the top performers in our world. Uh, what was one of the other surprising things you learned along the way that you go, wow, I didn't see that one coming? I... Um... You know, every time I would, I would reach out to somebody and all of these people ask me, how, how do you know Nobel Prize winners and astronauts and Olympic champions and mm, it's power of the network? But mm. I would always say to them, you know, I, you came up on my list as a high achiever. And they would say, I am. And then I would respond with, you won the Nobel Prize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you you're are, not a, you're high a high achiever, achiever. <laughs> what does that say? to the rest of us, <laughs> right? What does that say about us? Now, when I had the book launch party, when the book came out, I had several, but there was a private one for the people who are in the book Fine. Um, and the people who endorsed the book and some close family and friends. And one of the astronauts texts me because these people have become, a lot of these people have become really good friends. And he texts me and he said, oh, will Dr. Fauci be there? Because Dr. Fauci is one of the people who I interviewed. And I said, well, he's kind of busy right now. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, I said, but, you know, this Nobel Prize winner will be there, Dr. Bob Lefkowitz. So the astronaut says, oh, now he is a high achiever. And I'm thinking, you're an astronaut. Yeah, really. You don't think you're a high achiever. So really, it's about who is the company that you keep. And this is what's so important. If everyone around you is like you, all of a sudden, and you're and you're constantly producing your high achiever, that's your new norm. That's your new average. That's your new baseline. That has just simply, you have raised the bar of excellence within wow. your organization, within your industry, if everyone is like you. And you can learn from these kind of people because these are the people who are curious and creative and not afraid to fail, right? They fear not trying more than they fear failing. Mm -hmm. But it's who is the company that you keep. If all of these people are doing great stuff, you raise that bar of excellence. So yeah, the astronaut thought being an astronaut is no big deal because he knows hundreds of them, mm -hmm. hundreds of astronauts. Most people don't know one. Right. The Nobel Prize winners are like, yeah, we did great science, but you know, here's so many others who also right. did great. And they don't, wow. it's not that yeah. that big a deal. So the company that you keep is very important. And always aim to be the least interesting person in the room. That's how you'll learn. Oh, well, I can raise my hand on that. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll vouch for Larry on that yeah. for sure. <laughs> I, I slap myself on this one. <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad this is the end of the podcast because <laughs> this will go off the deep end really quick. But, you know, but there, there's some huge validation behind that. And just a, a special tip of the cap to our coach, Dave Sanderson, because mm -hmm. he's always coaching us on and he's putting us in proximity to people who have power and who have influence yeah. and really coaching us on learning what that tight inner circle of influence means and how you learn from people that are a lot more experienced than you. And I'm learning a lot. Because yeah. wow. I'm the least experienced of them all. <laughs> what, what do you think my world is like? Why interview? No <laughs> doubt. 
What a fascinating conversation. Oh, this is so good. Dr. Gautian, thank you so much for sharing uh, all of this with us and also putting this book together because I can't wait yeah, for everybody so to peel this back. The success factor, developing the mindset and skill set for peak business performance. Absolutely love it. Thank you for sharing time. This was wonderful. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. A PhD compacted into a half an hour. That was good. Beautiful, Thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> well done. Larry. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. We're like, where uh, do you start is, to unpack this? Why, this why is, so why is it that we, I always have mirror moments on the podcast and it always, I don't know. <laughs> I'm insecure right now, Daryl. Well, hey, you know what, though? If you look down that list and those four things that, that we talked about today, intrinsic motivation, you got to know your purpose, yeah. your why, that this is something we're huge advocates for. It goes back for. to the inner work. Yeah, the work ethic, the foundation, the informal learning. These are things, you know, that are what's what's encouraging to me about this, Larry, is when you look at the keys to success of these high performance people uh, that were interviewed to put this book together, you realized this this mindset is doable for everybody. And it's yep. this spirit of of um, excellence that I love that's alive and well inside the selling from the heart movement for authenticity in the sales profession. And I, I think this research to me is fascinating, validating and inspirational all at the same time. Yeah, it just, it just reminds me as we wrap this up, it was um, the CEO of Microsoft. He was just getting ready to finish a keynote. He was actually keynoting for, for a company and I happened to catch his keynote. And at the very end of it, he said this, he says, every day, we must wake up with a know-it-all mindset as opposed to a learn-it-all mindset. And I, I think, think you that got just, that backwards, but huh? yes. Yeah, I learned that. That's right. That's right. I'm the least experienced. So nevertheless, right? But that's right. Well, learn-it-all mindset. All and, -it -all. and how yeah. can we we be open to learning? And and I think the other thing that was, was fascinating, um, and this is validating as well, is surrounding yourself with like-minded people yeah. is really critical. And and that gives me a great opportunity to thank, again, the sponsor of the podcast, which is the Insiders Group at Selling from the Heart, because this is exactly what's going on. You may go, well, I don't have a bunch of like-hearted people in my bullpen. I don't even have a bullpen. I work out of a home office now. <laughs> well, surround yourself with like-minded people who are aiming in the same direction as you. Sellingfromtheheart.net slash insiders. You can join there. Uh, give it a try free for 30 days. And uh, and build that community. If you don't do it inside the insiders group, do it somewhere. Larry, I'm excited. This this yeah. conversation's got me fired up today. Yeah, so am I. I think I'm going to join the insiders group, Daryl, because I need some help right now. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> you may need a couch. So you actually may need to engage a selling from the heart coach. But that's a whole other conversation. Hey, listen. Thank you everybody for listening in, especially those of you who are sharing this podcast and leaving reviews. This is more than a podcast. This is a hub for a movement of authenticity inside our beloved sales profession. So please like, share, and leave us a review if you would on the platform on which you listen to the podcast. We've got some incredible uh, guests coming up. And Larry, I'm so excited about all that's happening right now. Um, we're just having an incredible time and selling from the heart is so much fun. The movement continues to build every single day. I'm just so fired up. Wow. Well, until next time, keep being genuine, keep being authentic, keep adding the real value, develop the mindset and skill set for peak business performance, and most of all, sell from the heart.